Trent, first of all, many congratulations uh, on the victory. Uh, and thank you for joining us at the Touchdown. I know you have no worries, many, no. many, many post-match commitments to get yourself through. So I think the first question I need to ask you is, um, it's a, a new look, Roosters, for this season. There's a lot of big names that have either departed the club mm. or, or haven't got on the plane for one reason or another. What did you as the coach learn about your team tonight? Yeah, I thought a few things, our back line. I think Tupu was the only one that was standing in the same position as last year, left wing. Everybody else was in some different positions. And I thought actually that was probably our strength tonight, was our combinations. I thought they turned up in good spots for each other. Um, but uh, second half was a bit disappointing for me. I thought we dropped off on some of the uh, laying a platform. I thought we laid a really good platform in the second half, in the first half. Second half, some errors and also some defensive errors. That was probably the key to the second half for us. So I mean, I know I, I know you're a, a deep thinker about the game. I, I wanted to ask you, what is it? What was it about the whole experience for the Roosters coming over here? Was it? about the result this evening or was it as much about giving your players exposing your players to this making them more rounded individuals uh, there was a few reasons first of all there was a few changes in our team this year you know there's a few changes that we didn't want Mitchell Pearson and uh, Boyd Cordner um, but there was a few young guys so we needed to give them an experience which was uh, there's a lot of external distractions in a game like this so the weather the travel the flight uh, new conditions opposition players but it's all an excuse. It's still 68 by 100. It's still a, a game of footy for 80 minutes. And, and it prepares you for big games. So if you can get rid of that external distraction and play your footy, it's a really good lesson before our season starts. So that was one. Um, and we love the international game. We really uh, we wanted to give them an, an off-field experience. That's why we went to Dubai. We've experienced Manchester. We're going to go to a soccer game tomorrow. That's... They were the two reasons why we came. Did you have you been to Yorkshire? Yeah, you've been across the Yorkshire. I have been to I Yorkshire. Re I lot. highly recommend it. Yeah. Let's let's get into the um, the nuts and bolts then of, of how I think the Roosters uh, won the game. And I'm going to I'm going to um, ask your opinion on this because I I gave Brian my opinion at halftime and, and I I'd singled out the work that you guys were doing off the ball as much as anything else and it was the support line work that you were pre both pre line and and in the tackle. And I thought it was consistent, it was exceptional, and it disrupted and loosened up that defensive line. I'm just going to ask you to talk over this. If you want yep. to stop it any time, please feel free to do so. Um, explain how much work and effort goes into this. Yeah, a lot. I don't know if you can go back there, John. So, I mean, really good work. We had a lot of platform being laid by these guys here, which allowed some tight spacings on this side. But this, was the, this is what we were looking at. The spacings between these guys. I don't like this shape, too yep. flat from that, but the key were obviously these two guys. We work a lot on short passing with our forwards uh, and good connection. We still want to run a line which they can carry off. Yep. So we don't want to run a soft passing line from Kane Evans. Uh, but his ability to go deep into the line and pass in the line, that's, a, that's months and months of training for us. And these two guys, presumably, well, presumably it's a, a daft question to ask, really. There's a communication gone on there. They know that that's, they're working almost as a little mini unit there yep. in between the two. And it was interesting you pointed out, it's the same thing um, Brian pointed out to me off camera before, and you're looking at the space in between these two individuals here and, and probably isolating them, making them turn in, making them do things they don't want to necessarily do in the defensive line. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think this may have been a keep going play. So he went from there to there, um, which means that probably maybe Travis Burns, I think, may have should have got around the corner here. But this third man out really allowed us to attack that spot. If he, if he probably went across there, we may have come back with these two players. Um, but really good awareness from, from two forwards and great play. Oh, that was really really smart play. And it was responding and reacting to what was in front of them as well, which is it's very easy to, when you see this and you see it done so well, is to say that it's robotic. This is something that's just drilled into them and there's no thought gone into it. And that's, that's, that's not the case. And you can see that's not the case. We've got an example, the last clip on this to show you, which, which, which proves our point. It culminated in the first half after building that huge platform with again Kane Evans, this time to Isaac Liu. Uh, in a, in a full-on break, and that's ultimate, the, the ultimate goal. I go march them downfield and disrupt that defence. I think if you go back, John, just to where they started from as well, just to the start of that clip, the difference, a lot of forwards play it, but that, that spacing between that depth allows the genuine line uh, from Isaac Liu, whereas a lot of guys will be flat, but I don't know if you can obviously see Siwa there as well. That's a genuine play. They're playing a flatter short side play here. Again, third man out. 
allowing that spacing uh, for these players to attack. So, so who is it who takes control then at this? Who is, who's organising this on the field at the time? Who's the, is this a play that's come two plays before? Is this something that you can just drop into a, a second's notice? It's definitely a structured play. You can see a half and fullback looking, thinking that they might be going short side. But as soon as they loaded up their short side and left this open, these guys are ready to return against the, against the grain, we call it there. Um, and perfect shape. You won't get much better shape than that from those three forwards. I thought, and they were the key tonight, I thought there was some spoils for outside backs, um, but big games from Sorry, Evans. Sorry, describe what you mean by spoils by, by out, for oh, outside? Oh, well, there was some tries. There was some uh, breaks. Some riches. OK, yeah, I get some you. Some riches, I, I, yeah. So, and, and all off the back of the hard work done Definitely. Uh, in the middle here. So we'll, we'll, we'll follow this through then. And you're right, each one a viable pass option, viable running option. Every single one of them makes a, a defender accountable for somebody. And that's what I thought was so impressive with the way you did it in the first half. We have got a clip in the second half as well, which is, again, it's, it's a rebuttal to anybody that says that this is robotic and this is something that is, that is drilled into players uh, with no little thought as to what's going on. And, and the guy I'm picking out is Sam Moa because he's picked something. He's picked Kyle Amore. And Kyle Amore, who's, who's come on and tried in vain to lift the St. Helens team, and he's shot out of a line. Now, I've looked at this carefully. He wasn't initially going to give a tip, but there was no, no real communication between these two guys. But I'm guessing because of the work and the effort and the time you spent doing this, he knows that there's an out for him. If Kyle Amore does what he does here, which is put some real pressure, come out of the line, he's trying to, trying to rescue Saints, trying to raise, yep. raise Saints. I think this is a really, really smart play. And I, again, it's a, it's a superb rebuttal for somebody who says that's, this is a robotic thing that can be trained into anybody. It's smart. Again, John, if you go back to the start of that clip, so when, once they get into the line, it's all about vision and, and using their eyes. But just go back to the start. You watch these movements. Just to, is it? Can it go back a little bit more? Just a bit, bit more, bit more, bit more. Just here. Okay. You watch Sam work his way into position. So it's it's this this group of players here that you're talking about yeah. now. So Sam Mower, who carries the ball, works his way. But watch these guys just pull off the ball here. So watch that step. Just that step allows that angle on the. So it's just this minor adjustments, just here, yes. pre-play. Which allows them to get a little bit wider and then get that angle on that plate. Um, and that, again, look at, just see the angle there. They're, they're only they're tiny details in a, in a, in a game, but, but that makes a difference on that play. They're all genuine carriers of the ball. There's not, there's not a late acceleration. It's just gives them a chance to angle back at the ruck. They can use late feet and get on the outside, but that's really nice footy. That was the difference for us. And it, it, was, it was executed supremely well. I want to take you on to what I considered the game breaker. This was the, uh, the, the first Roosters try of the second half, scored by one of your most experienced and decorated players. Uh, but for me, created by, well, I'll let you call him a future superstar of the game. I thought he had an outstanding match this evening. A good player. Okay. I'll <laughs> understate him as much as I can. A good start to an NRL career, I'd say. And it's J uh, Jaden Nicarima, Jayden of course, Nicarima. that we're, we're talking yep. about. There's, 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 I see backs of potential in this individual. Yep. Um, but again, I mean, it, the same story. You've got Aidan Guerra here hitting a really, really honest uh, line. And these are the efforts that go unrewarded, I think, quite a lot of the time. Yep. They're, they're well, you have to do them five times to get maybe one result in a good game. Yeah. You might do them ten times to get one or two results. You have to keep doing and keep doing them. They don't, they don't appear on your first try. And that's a team that sticks at it long enough will get their spoils. Yeah, that's, I, mean, I think that's it's, it's superb. I think the, again, there you go. This is the line. This is where it's all undone. This is where he does get the response. And it's not for his own benefit, but it's because it's created a, a bit of space here. And this is the area that we're talking about now. This is the space where you've got defenders that are unsure about what they're doing. And you've got somebody quick of thought and fleet of foot and has gone through, and Sean Kenny Dow does doing what he does best on the outside. Uh, uh, again, pr the game-breaker for me, not only because it put to bed that Saints revival, but, but also I think it demonstrated everything that we'd, we'd liked uh, about the Roosters in the, in the first half. That, that structure, the ability to play what you see, uh, and that willingness to repeat and, and, and to go again with those lines when they are unrewarded. So I, yep. it's, uh, you must be an incredibly happy coach. Yeah, yeah. I was, look, I'll take two first halves if I could. That second half, as I said, a bit disappointing. I thought there were limited plays like that. I didn't think we, uh, we worked as hard as we could. And I thought there was too much metres after contact on a lot of our tackling in that second. The first uh, set, I think they went 70 metres and got that try. And that was sort of set the tone for that, that second half. Um, but first run out, it was our first run this year. Um, new combinations, that's a good start from us.
Great stuff. Listen, thank you very much for taking the time. Uh, I know you have many, many commitments to get yourself through. It's been really enlightening um, spending time with you at the touchscreen. Really enjoyed it. And I wish you a safe journey home and many congratulations.